Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 38 of the platform specific series of my Z80 programming tutorials. Now, we've been playing digital sound samples on various systems over the last couple of weeks. We're going to finish the job today. We're going to see how to do it on the Master System and the Game Gear, which have the same sound processor, the ELAN Enterprise, and the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, which also, of course, have the same sound system. We're going to look at these three systems today and we're going to see how to do it. Essentially, we're going to be using the same code with just a few tweaks based on the original AY sample. So if you have time, please go back and have a look at lesson 35, where we went over the concept and also looked at the basic code. We're going to have a quick look at the code today again, but we're going to go over it a little bit more quickly than before. More importantly, the versions we're going to see today, two of them are quite different. The Master System version has been tweaked so that it doesn't use self-modifying code, and instead we're using all of the registers, which may be preferable also on systems like the MSX, where we might be running from ROM. We're also going to be looking at the Game Boy Color, which of course isn't a true Z80. Now this causes rather large problems with regards to the ROM version, because I was using the IX and IY registers that the GBZ80 doesn't have to make it work on ROM on the Master System. So I've made a bit of a problem there, but we do get around it. So we're going to have a look at that again today. Now first of all if you haven't seen the previous lessons let's just have a look at the sound samples we're going to be playing today or rather I should have said let's have a listen to them of course because you can't really look at the sound samples. So we've got this hello one let's just hear that. Hello it's Keith here and then we've got a collection of sound effects which my dad kindly produced for me on his analog synthesizer so that's very kind of him. So a variety of different sound samples there just that we can hear how the sounds are affected by the compression and the different systems. So let's have a look at the code. So we're going to be using this common program today as before. We've got some definitions here. The bit depth is here. We'll be using the 4-bit per sample definitions first because they're the highest quality. And we'll be using frequency 4 here, which is reasonable but not great. And then we've got some definitions here, but really all of the work is done by this Chibi Wave call here. We pass it a frequency in B, a bit setting in A, which is the bits per sample. And the Chibi Wave program is specific to the individual platform because it has to do the things that the hardware requires. So first of all, let's hear it on the Sega Master System. So there's our sound effects. And if I just enable this sample hello. So there we go. If we increase the frequency, the quality will get higher. Hello, Although that Hello, does sound like it's here. playing a little slow. And so you can see, we can just change the frequency to increase the quality, but of course the file size does increase. Now, as before, all of the WAV files you're hearing today were converted with my Chibi Wave converter, which is open source and free, and you can download it with the samples.7-zip off my website. This program will convert a 16-bit normal sound sample into 4, 2, or 1-bit for the example today, and this should be suitable for all of your 8-bit gaming needs if you want to convert sound samples. So that was the Sega Master System we heard there. Let's have a look at the actual source code. So this is Chibi Wave. Now, originally it was using self-modifying code. This version has been modified to not use self-modifying code. Instead, we're using IX and IY. Now, originally I avoided using these because they don't exist on the Game Boy and on some 8-bit systems, IX and IY are used by the firmware, for example, on the ZX Spectrum. So I try and avoid them where I can, but because we can't use self-modifying code and wherever possible, I don't want to use temporary variables in memory, we were using the IX and IY here and they're replacing the self-modifying code. So the first thing we're doing is working out what bits per sample we're using here, and there's a function call which will handle the conversion of the sample to the format that's needed by the sound hardware here, and we are setting that here, and then we're loading it into IY here. So IY will contain the call we need to make. And then we're loading IXL with the number of samples per byte, and IXH with the delay after each sample that we have to pause. So the code starts here as before. We load in a byte from HL, which is our source. We then load in the number of samples we're going to play into E. We pop a bit out of D into the accumulator here, and then we're going to call the address that's in our IY register. So we run this call IY here, which jumps to the address in IY. This will call to either do 4-bit wave, do 2-bit wave, or do 1-bit wave here. And this will shift as many bits as required into the accumulator. When we get to here, we're ready to actually make the sound. 
Now the way we make the sound on all of our systems is we just set the volume output to the correct point in the wave. If you imagine the wave is a sequence of bytes, these represent the heights of the wave that we need to create. And we just do that by setting the volume. Now on the Sega Master System, we need to set the top four bits to 1101 here to select the channel and to select that we're setting the volume. The bottom four bits will actually be the volume we're setting and we've shifted those into position with this code here. So that's really all we need to do. The execution will return back to here. We then wait using the um, B as the counter. So there's just a loop here. And then we decrease E, which was the counter of the number of samples in the byte. If there's any left, we just repeat back here and pop some more bits out. If there aren't, then we decrease our length of sample, which is in D here. We pushed it in here. We're popping it back here. We just decrease it. We then see if it's zero yet. If it's not, we jump all the way back up here and we carry on again. If it is, we just return. So that's how we do it on the Sega Master System. And that's how we did it pretty much on the AY systems before. It's just changed very slightly this time because it's using no self-modifying code. So there we go. Now this time we're going to try it on the Enterprise version. I'm having to use a lower frequency and that's because the way that I'm loading the file into memory, I'm limited to kind of 16K and the other file samples are too big. So we're going to compile with this smaller sample, but it's still going to sound pretty good. So there we go. And we can hear the hello sample. Hello, it's Keith here. Hello, it's Keith here. Now, of course, because we're converting the sound samples where required, even though the Enterprise and the Sega Master System use four bits per sample, we can use lower resolutions if we want. For example, we can use one bit per sample, which would be more suited to the ZX Spectrum typically, but it will save us some memory. That said, from what I've seen, generally speaking, you want to lower the frequency and keep the bits per sample as high as possible for the best quality sound, but it's entirely up to you. The examples we're seeing today do support all of the sample options. So the Enterprise code is very similar to the Sega Master System one we just saw, and it's actually identical, give or take, to the AY version. We're using self-modifying code this time for the calls and for the sample rate and the pauses. But apart from that, it's the same. The only real important thing is when we come to change the volume. Now we have to out the volume level to A8 and AC to set the volume of channel zero. But these use a six bit definition, so we have to rotate left twice to get it into the right position. But apart from that, it's all exactly the same. Nothing too remarkable there. So we're not going to look at it in any more detail than that. Now let's have a look at the Game Boy. So that was one bit per sample. Let's hear it a bit better quality at four bits per sample. Now it's playing a little bit slowly and that's because the frequencies need to be changed. Um, the, the code here is basically the same on all systems, but because the Game Boy version is more complicated, it is actually playing a little bit slow, but just bear with me on that. Now let's try the um, sound effects. Now they sounded okay. Let's try a lower frequency this time, and let's try the regular Game Boy, of course. They're playing far too slow. Anyway, the, the principle works. I mean, you, you just need to tweak the play speeds here. I have tried to put in some simple conversion here to try and get it a bit closer, but obviously I'm not doing a very good job. The point is we are able to play our digital sound samples back on the Game Boy. So let's have a look at the source code and see what we're actually doing. Now, essentially, this is a converted version of the Sega Master System version. And if you remember before, we looked at some macros that I've created for emulating the missing commands on the GBZ80 so that we can pretend we've got the regular Z80 commands that we don't actually have. Now, if you compare the Sega Master System version, you will see that we're using fake IXL and IXH here in exactly the same way. You can see we're using them in exactly the same purpose. So IY, this fake IY is our call. IXL is our bit depth and IXH is our delay in the same way as before. And we're just getting them back when it comes to pausing here, just here with this macro here. I covered all of these in a previous example where I went through all of the commands and discussed how I'd found ways of emulating them. Now, my emulation isn't great, but it does the job for purposes like this. Now, the, the one that was a bit tricky was call IY. Now, the, the, I didn't have an emulated jump to IY. It's not a command I really ever used before. So what I've done here is I've used B and C temporarily. So I load into B and C here and I push that onto the stack. But I did need the accumulator to be the same as before. So I just used this temporary value R, which I occasionally use to fake the R register on the Z80. But this program didn't need it. So I just used it as a temporary memory store for that. So this is affecting a call to IY and 
the rest of the code is just using a few memory locations instead of the missing registers. So that's working okay, although it is slow, which is why the sound samples are playing back slower than they should. When it comes to actually setting the sound, it's very straightforward. We use port FF24 in memory. We just write a volume level. We need to double up the data because we need to set the left and right channel independently, but we only need three bits and our samples are four bits. So we're potentially wasting one bit, but from what I've found, four bits, even though only three of them are working, is still vastly superior to two bits. Now, if you really wanted to save memory, you could create a custom version of Chibi Wave, which would create three bits per sample. But I haven't done that because it would get tricky because you'd end up using two samples in the first byte and then you'd have two bits left and then you'd take one bit from the next byte. And yes, you could do that, but it, it seemed excessive for what I was doing. I was only looking to give you a very basic example of the way you could play wave files. If you need something more specific to your needs, you're going to want to rewrite this. If you're always using four bits per sample, for example, this is really over the top. You would just want something that really just worked with that. And if you're always using one bit per sample again, all of this extra code would just want to go. The Spectrum Beeper example is a, only plays one bit per sample because that's all the Spectrum Beeper can do. For, and that's far simpler code and it's far faster playing back. So as I say, this is just a real one size fits all example piece of code here. But you can see here, this is how we can play the wave back. Now, one important thing to notice is that the Game Boy does actually have the ability to play wave files. It's got this thing called Wave Pattern RAM here, and it does have a specific wave channel here. Now, in theory, this would be quite handy because it does actually use four bits per sample. But unfortunately, from my reading of the documentation on this, there's no way that we can get it to do what we need to. Now, what we would need to do is we would need to kind of fill a buffer and have it streaming out that buffer as we kept putting more and more data in. Now, there's no way to detect when the 30 two samples have finished playing and what's worse than that is apparently we have to turn the channel off when we refill the buffer so I think this is just for creating very crude instrument effects I don't think it's capable of playing a wave file in the example of me saying hello now I'll open a challenge here if anyone has seen a Game Boy game that plays digital sounds I'd really love to hear it because I owned a Game Boy back in the 80s and I've got multiple Game Boys now and I've played emulators. Now, I've never heard a Game Boy play large sound samples like pieces of speech or something and I really didn't think the Game Boy could do it until, until I saw these tutorials. Um, the extreme example was that his beat menu on the Game Boy is horrible, the sound on it, whereas if you play the Wonderswan version, it sounds excellent. So I, I say, if you've heard of a game on the Game Boy which has really good digital sound, then let me know because I'd love to see what it looks like. Anyway, that's all we're going to be covering today. As I've said always, get the source code both for the examples today and also for Chibi Wave. Um, everything I make you can get from my website. As always, there's documentation on the website. If you like to read rather than watch videos, then please go ahead and, and check it out. Personally, I prefer reading programming documentation to watching videos, but you know, whichever you prefer, I try and make it all available. If you like to learn from source, go grab it. If you want to watch the videos, do that. If you want to read it, just go ahead and download it all. Whatever you prefer, it should really, whatever the way you find easiest to learn, you know, I try and make it available. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching today. Thanks a lot and goodbye.